Bonjour. Or should that be hello? Hello there, I am that gamer guy, and welcome to Gamer Guy Travels, the series where I discuss everything travel related. Following on from my last video in the series, my first impressions of France, this video is going to be my first impressions of Belgium. More specifically, Brussels, Bruges and Antwerp. And as always, you don't have to have seen my corresponding Euro trip video, but I'll be leaving it somewhere in case you do want to. Now, I was somewhat reluctant to make this video, and I'll get into why later. So let's discuss Belgium. The first city I visited in Belgium was Brussels. And going from Paris, where I pre-planned pretty much everything that I wanted to do, to Brussels, where I'd planned literally nothing, I didn't see as much as Brussels as I would like to have done. But my lack of organisation wasn't the main reason for that. So I get to Brussels, I get the tram to my hostel, meet my roommates and we arrange to all go for a drink together. They say that they've heard of a cool bar in Brussels called Delirium. Now chances are, if you've been to Brussels, you've been to Delirium. It's a pilgrimage that any tourist to Belgium needs to make. Delirium is basically a multi-level bar complex. And the reason it's so famous is it boasts something like 20,000 different beers. Now in Paris, I didn't really drink too much. I had a couple of whiskey and cokes in a jazz bar one night, and of course some glasses of champagne here and there throughout the week, but I certainly didn't get drunk. That was not the case for Brussels. So as I mentioned, Delirium is famous for its beer, as indeed is all of Belgium. So before my Euro trip, I wasn't really the biggest beer fan. And this is the moment where that all changed. In Delirium, at the bar, you basically tell the bartender what kind of flavours you like, what kind of strength you're after, and they choose a beer for you. And after some trial and error, I found my beer. If you're interested, I think it's called a Creek. It's basically a cherry beer. But what's important is that Delirium helped me to enjoy beer. So enough about Belgian beer for now, and on to another thing that the Belgians do very, very well. Here in the UK, most people have a kind of drunken tradition. After a night out, on the walk home, you get some dirty food. Nine times out of ten, a kebab. So here I am in Brussels, walking back to the hostel. I pass a kebab shop. I have to get one. And oh my god, that kebab was the best drunken kebab I've ever had. Belgians know how to make a good kebab. They use a fancy bread that's kind of like a pitta, but not really. They have an amazing array of sauces. Try the samurai sauce, you'll thank me later. And obviously another thing that Belgians are famous for, their fries. So all in all, that night was glorious. The next morning, however, was not. The hangover was real. Not only that, but around about this time, Western Europe was experiencing a cold wave, and Brussels on that day was cold. So like I said earlier, I hadn't pre-planned anything to do in Brussels, so I thought to get some ideas, I'd do a free walking tour. Now, if you're travelling across Europe, I can't recommend free walking tours enough. Whilst my tour of Brussels was very cold, the tour was actually really enjoyable. It gives you ideas of where you might want to visit, it gives you a good bearing of the city centre, and it's a good way to meet other travellers. And after Brussels, I did a free walking tour on the first day of, I think, every single city that I went to. So after the walking tour, I walk around some more, see some sights, I try an authentic Belgian waffle for the first time. Apparently authentic waffles are plain but caramelised, and tourist waffles are waffles with diabetes stacked on them. And I didn't really do too much that day, because that night was St Patrick's night. That's right, another night of drinking. So I spent St Patrick's night in an Irish bar in Brussels, drinking from a jug of beer, and of course had a cheeky kebab on the way home. I actually think in the space of that 24 hours I had three kebabs. Stop judging me right now. So the next day I have two nights of hangover to condemn with, only to discover that the previous night I drunkenly booked myself a ticket to go to Mini Europe. It's one of those miniature park attractions which I've never been to before. So here's my brief review of Mini Europe. Don't go during winter. The day that I went was somehow colder than the day before if that was possible. Consequently, all of the miniature buildings had frozen. Nothing was working. I tried to convince myself that I was enjoying it for about an hour, but then I decided enough was enough and I left. And when you leave, you get your picture taken with the world's saddest looking mascot. I'll see if I can insert a picture, but the poor person in there must have been so cold. So I have the rest of the day to explore Brussels. Obviously, as a British person in the current political climate, I really wanted to go and see the EU Parliament and the surrounding area, but it was so cold. So what did I do? I went and got a McDonald's, went back to my hostel, and fell asleep. A side note, during my Euro trip, I set myself an incredibly basic bitch challenge. I wanted to try a McDonald's in every capital city that I went to, just to see any differences in the menu. France had the Royale cheese, and Belgium had beer. That's right, in Belgium you can buy beer at McDonald's. Of course you can. And as ashamed as I am to say it, that pretty much was my time in Brussels. 
beer, kebabs and more beer. Which I think is pretty Belgian. So the next city I visited in Belgium was Bruges. So let's be honest, the only reason people visit Bruges is because they've seen the film in Bruges. One gay beer for my gay friend, one normal beer for me because I am normal. Great film, check it out if you haven't. I know that was the case for me and I am so glad that I did. Bruges was the most pretty town, city that I visited during my Euro trip. It is everything it is in that film and more. So I arrive in Bruges and it's a small place so I decide to walk to my hostel. Now I wasn't travelling with a travel backpack, instead I had a day pack and a suitcase. So here's a word to the wise. Heavy wheeled suitcases and the quiet cobbled streets of Bruges I'm pretty sure the whole of Bruges could hear me wheeling my way to the hostel. But I finally get there and I check in and head straight back out to do my in Bruges film location sightseeing. So this place was beyond pretty and fairly quiet in the day, but at night it is even prettier and it is so, so quiet. I don't think I felt as safe anywhere in the world as I did in Bruges. And that includes parts of the UK. I wasn't actually in Bruges for that long, so I didn't get to experience too much of it. But highlights include spending about 30 minutes and 30 euros in an authentic Belgian chocolatier, and then sit by a canal and eat all of said chocolates within five minutes. Another highlight was eating a Flemish beef and beer stew in a brewery run by monks. And of course, probably the main attraction of Bruges, the bell tower. It gives you pretty much an all-encompassing view of the whole city. So that was pretty much my time in Bruges, more eating, more drinking, kind of spotting a theme here. So the third and final Belgian city that I visited was Antwerp. I have polarising memories of Antwerp. Firstly, pretty much from the moment I arrived to the moment I left, it was raining a lot. Now as much as I would say otherwise, it's really hard to not let external variables affect your perception of a place be that weather or accommodation or whatever. In my case, Antwerp was the first city where the weather wasn't ideal and the hostel wasn't ideal either. So I try to enjoy Antwerp for Antwerp, but at this moment in time in Antwerp, there is so much construction. The whole city is apparently under redevelopment. There didn't seem to be a single significant landmark that didn't have scaffolding around it or a crane next to it. And that makes it hard to enjoy a place, especially when you're not there for very long. And because of that, Antwerp was probably my least favourite city that I went to during my Euro trip. But hey, in five, ten years time, it might be the next Paris. Um, but this was also to be my first of two visits to Antwerp. Why did I go back if I didn't like it? Uh, well, ironically enough, Antwerp was also the location for my, shall we say, only significant holiday romance. I'm not going to go into it too much as this was why I was reluctant to make this video. But I met a guy, we had a good connection, so much so that I went back to Antwerp to see him again, spent a week together, said our goodbyes, and now I'm back here in the UK. It's fine, and thankfully I don't think he'll watch this video. But there we go, as I said, polarising memories of Antwerp. And I think, more or less, there ends my first impressions of Belgium. One thing I will say is that Benelux countries, that is Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg, the people of those countries are very similar to British people, which is a good or bad thing depending on how you want to take it. So those were my very food and drink focused first impressions of Belgium. That was a tongue twister, thank you for watching. If you've been to Belgium then please feel free to leave your first impressions down in the comments. And with that, I'll say goodbye. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. If there's anything travel related that you'd like me to discuss in a future video, then please leave your suggestions down in the comments. J'espère vous voir la prochaine fois. Ma tot dan. Can I grow up in Dublin? I love Dublin. If I'd grown up on a farm and was retarded, Bruges might impress me, but I didn't, so it doesn't.